and you will we bless the Lord for you. And we thank the Lord. Sam, every day I wake up, I'm thankful. Amen. Every day I wake up, I'm thankful. Even if the night before wasn't the way I wanted it, I'm still thankful. know our cash app it should already be there on the screen those of you that are watching dollar sign 313 wrm and give the five word restoration ministries if you're dropping a gift in the basket you can just come around drop your gift in the basket and then go back to your seat i want to go right into this word if you don't mind we are blessed and we are here for another community day the truck is outside already Amen. So we thank the Lord. And every time somebody is helped, that makes me feel good. Amen. That makes me feel good. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who have been pressing, just pressing and making it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you to Elder Carlton for the game truck. And Sharice did a great job with that mobile truck. Thank you, Sharice. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to be putting her to work even more, Elder Carlton. She's going to be doing more stuff because she knows how to do a whole lot of stuff. We got a whole lot of gems around here that's in hiding. But I promise y'all, as sure as if the Lord let me live, I promise y'all I'm looking for the gems. I'm digging down deep, Calvin. I'm digging down deep. Mm -hmm. Josh, say amen right there. I'm digging down deep. I'm digging down deep because I still believe that everything already in the house. I am for that. St. Luke chapter number five. This is a familiar passage of scripture. I'm just going to read a few of the verses. You don't even have to stand, but but whatever you read from, I'm going to be reading from the NIV. I just want to lift three points. I just want to use one word uh, as a subject. So I'm going to just lift three points. I'm going to give one word as a subject. Um, the NIV started at verse number one says, one day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gazaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to pull out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And the word of the Lord is blessed for the reader, the hearer, and the doer of his word. I want to talk about one word today, and that word is deep. Deep. D-E-E-P. If you're watching, write that on the screen. Just type that in. Deep. Deep. This familiar passage of scripture that deals with Jesus who is dealing with a problem. Jesus is directing, uh, dealing with the problem that could have been resolved had their faith been different. But before I jump on them and beat them up, let me say, as we're laying groundwork in the lesson, that it is very clear that when you are experienced, Sharice, at doing something and it just doesn't come together, you will immediately develop a sense of frustration. Now, if it's something that you're not familiar with, then you might exercise a little more patience. But when you have a sense of familiarity and it's not coming together, the frustration is enhanced by the fact that you know how it should go. So now here in the backdrop of this particular text, Jesus is here and the people, uh, Elder Carlton, that show up don't show up because they love God. <laughs> Wow, they don't show up because they're so excited about Jesus, but they show up because the word has gone out that if you can get to Jesus, favor will fall on you. And I'm not even mad at them because even in 2021, there are folk that come to church, but they don't come for Jesus. They don't come because they want to grow Joshua. They don't come because they want to be better. They come because they're looking for something. And there's nothing wrong with looking for something if the something is Jesus. 
Oh God, so now we're in a culture, uh, a gin that says name it and claim it, blame it and slap it, turn it in. But there's nothing that tells you for everything that Jesus gives you, there is something that he is going to require of you. Mm. Let me say it again. Every time he does something, he wants you to do something. Pulling closer to the text and you will see that it brings us to our very first point where Jesus is direct. Jesus ends up on the boat, but watch this. He directly talks to Simon and he asks him, can I use what you have? Um, let me pause there because I believe that even when we're asking things of Jesus, we've got to be aware that it's going to cost us something to go deeper. Mm. And I'm nervous because every time, and I just want to remind you that every time you say to God, take me deeper, understand that it's going to cost you something to go deeper. Mm. Anybody that has ever grown in God, they'll tell you it costs me a lot. Mm. A whole lot of tears, a whole lot of prayer. It costs me a lot. And I'm not talking about people who imitate. I'm talking about people who really are authentic in their worship. It's going to cost you something. So Jesus tells him first, Jesus tells him directly, can I use what you have? Now let me, let me just throw this in because this is a very familiar passage of scripture. And so I, I, I began to ask myself a few questions. The very first question I asked was why did Jesus need, you know, why did Jesus want Simon's boat? Hmm. Uh, I mean, after all, I mean, we are talking about Jesus that can create something out of nothing. So why does he need, Sam, why does he need anything that, Sam, that Simon has? Well, let's just try to peruse this a little bit to come up with some possibilities of why Jesus would want what Simon has. Let me start here. Number one, could it have been possible that Jesus wanted what Simon had to find out how committed Simon was to getting what he wanted? Well, let me start there because a lot of times we want from uh, Jesus, Kelly, but we don't want to give him nothing in return. Remember, he says, come unto me, all of you that are laden and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. But he makes it very clear that it's going to cost you something when you come. Even Jesus himself, who dies on the cross of Calvary, makes it very clear that if I'm going to do this, it's going to cost something. So yes, my dearly beloved children of God, salvation is free for you, but it costs Jesus his life. Mm. So Jesus says, says to Simon, Simon, give me, give me, watch this, give me what is valuable to you. Mm. Watch this, give me your money maker. Mm. Wow. Now can I tell you, some things are easy to get Jesus. See, when we come to church and we pity pack a little bit, that didn't really hurt us. That didn't really cost a whole lot. Oh, but when we got to turn down our plate, when we got to fast, when, it, when we got to pray, when we got to love our enemies, when we got to treat people right that do us wrong, when we still got to love the hypocrite and the liar. Oh, God, Lord, I don't want to give up all of that. I mean, yeah, I can clap. I can say amen. But Lord, you want me to do stuff that is going to cost me. So watch this. So then, so then, so then, so then, Jesus, G Jesus, then after he is direct, then he defines. He defines exactly what he's getting ready to do. And watch this. He says, he says to Simon, before he works a miracle, he defines specifically what he wants. And this is what he says to Simon. Watch this. He doesn't, John, he doesn't make Simon a promise, but he does require something of him. This is what he said. Pull your boat out just a little bit. <laughs> now, i got to tell y'all, anybody that's ever been on a boat, if you've ever been fishing, you already know what I'm getting ready to say. And that is this, that pulling out the boat a little bit would not have been enough to resolve the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, because that means pulling out 
the boat a little bit, you're still on the shore. And if you're on the shore, then you're not far enough out to actually catch fish. Mm. So now Simon is still frustrated. Lord, I got a problem. You've been, you've been very direct with me. Now you've defined for me what you wanted. But even in that, now you are deliberate in what you want from me. But the problem is, it does not fix my let me pause here for a second because has it ever been a time, and maybe I'm the only person in this room, so I'm going to close my eyes and not going to look at anybody. Has it ever been anybody where you prayed? I mean, like you prayed hard. You prayed for real. I mean, straight up, no chaser, no games. And even after praying, you got nothing. There's nothing more frustrating, at least for me. I don't know about y'all, but I get frustrated when I'm serious with y'all. God, I ain't playing. God, I'm laying everything aside. God, I ain't playing with you. God, I need an answer. Lord, I'm on a time schedule. And not only does it not move, but it don't say nothing. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And somebody will come along and tell you something like, just keep waiting.
what you would have us to do. For being deliberate and direct. If we just trust you. So help us now to be more like you. It is because of you that we are. So we thank you now. Now Lord, now I pray for every person that has benefited from these community plans. I pray for them now. Somebody doesn't know you're the part of these seeds. I pray God that we're dropping seeds in the right places. And Lord, we thank you for it now. Now Lord, these your people that sit in this room, bless them one by one and name by name. For wherever they are in life now, that you're meeting the needs for them now. For what is rough, make it smooth. That which is difficult, straighten it out now. Heal broken places and injured places. Lord, we thank you now. Resolve matters that have not been resolved. Heal places where we feel there is no hope. Lord, now we thank you. Remember those who are less fortunate than we are. Because God, we thank you. But we shall never forget that it could have been us. So we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Those who have not given give you the opportunity to do so. Those that are sewing online, bless you. I want to give you an opportunity to do so. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. I give you an opportunity to do so. Hallelujah. I don't know who ordered this chilly weather, but I'm going to ask you now if you want me to send that right on back. Now. 